Welcome to Fresh Off the Set. I'm Carrie Hopper Diaz. And I'm Sarah Jenkins. Thank you so much for listening today. So today's topic is a very serious one. We're talking about suicide. Um, I sat down with Brandy Vega, who shares her personal story um, about her daughter, and she opens up and she also gives us tips. If you're struggling, if you know a family member, a friend is struggling, just to help out. It really, all it takes is these simple ways to help out. And I think it can be so impactful because it's such a devastating topic, but it's something that so many people have been impacted by. So I think it's important to talk about. And that's what, that's her message too, is we need to talk about it. And uh, she gives us great resources also. So um, let's give a listen. I am so honored to have my personal friend, entrepreneur, humanitarian, Brandy Vega here on the show today. Thank you so much for doing this podcast. Brandy, great to see you. It's great to be here. Thank you, guys. Well, you're busy. You're doing a bunch of things, including an event that we're going to get into that's this weekend that we want to talk about. First of all, let's let's start with tell us who you are and what organizations you are a part of. So I own Vega Media Studios. It's a video production company, and I founded Good Deed Revolution back in 2015. It's a nonprofit, and right now we're doing Live Live. So I've been doing production forever. I was in the Army as a broadcast journalist and public affairs specialist. I worked in TV news. I've kind of been around in the video production and broadcast world most of my career. Yeah, and you are very good at all of it, but especially feel like the humanitarian um, genre. You just are constantly and consistently helping people, and this project that you have going on this weekend. Tell us about the event really quick. So Live Live, I... um, I almost lost my 14-year-old to suicide last year, and it was a big wake-up call. It was her second attempt. She had attempted at 12, and we almost lost her, but because of the stigma, we didn't want to talk about it. Mm -hmm. I was afraid. I was embarrassed. I was humiliated. I was ashamed. I I didn't want to be the face or the voice to talk about that. Too vulnerable. And the stigma, but I finally, the second time after it happened, I knew it didn't work the first time, so I talked about it, and when I did, people listened. The story went viral. Um, I shared what happened after her attempt, got hundreds of messages, thousands of views, and that's kind of led us to where we are today. I just, I was actually asked by a media friend to share my story, and when I shared my story on the air, I said, if you're listening to this right now, and I'm going to challenge you too, if you're listening to this right now, stop what you're doing and go ask your child or your loved one, even your parent or your spouse, are you suicidal? Don't beat around the bush. Just ask the hard questions. Just ask the question. And so when I did that on the news, I had a dad message me shortly after. He said, you just saved my daughter's life. I went to check on her. I watched her story. She had already written her suicide note. She was getting ready to kill herself, and I found her. And I had another parent who said, we talked to our son after we heard your story. He confessed he had a plan for the weekend. And so I thought, if my little story on the news could save two out of 20 or 30,000, what could we do if we could reach 200,000 or Mm -hmm. 2 million or 20 million? So we've created this event where we're essentially door dashing hope, help, healing, and resources to people wherever they are around the globe on the devices and platforms they use through the people they trust. So we're streaming on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, and we're going to be bringing them resources. It's my way of paying it forward because I got a second chance with my daughter, and most people don't. Um, I'm tearing up over here. You can't see me, but you can probably hear it. Um, Thank you for all you're doing. That really is incredible. Um, How prevalent is suicide in Utah, Brandy? It's interesting because there's still a stigma associated with talking about it. People are afraid to admit. They they feel like it's a a weakness. Yeah. But it's a big problem. In fact, in around the world, every 40 seconds, somebody dies by suicide. And for every one death, there's multiple attempts. Mm -hmm. And so it's just something we're afraid to talk about. It's something we don't know how to get help for. But it is something that is 100% preventable. Mm -hmm. You know, and when my daughter almost died, this was last year, last year, I, when she finally came out of it, and we weren't sure if she was going to survive, if she was going to have long term issues, I was holding her hand. And I said, are you glad you woke up? And she said, yeah, mom, I didn't really want to die. But it was too late. And there's a lot of people who feel like it's too late. And I'm just here to tell you it's not. It's okay to not be okay. There's help, there's hope, there's resources, we've got information. And you know, once you know about it, and once we can start talking about it, you find, like, I had no idea what NAMI was. I had no idea. Okay, I don't know what that is. Will you tell us? Yeah, absolutely. NAMI is, um, it, it's N-A-M-I dot org. 
And it's a great resource for families if you're struggling, if you've been through loss, if you're considering it. They have classes. There's local chapters. It's amazing. There's AFSP. Dot org, another great group. Like there's just so many things out there that can help you know what you can do to prevent it. And if you can't prevent it or you've already had something happen or you're struggling, there's still resources. And that's a problem. Like you don't know about this stuff until you're in the middle of a crisis. And I remember just crying at the hospital and the doctors and nurses were overwhelmed. They didn't even have a bed for my baby because they had over 20 suicide attempts in a weekend. In a weekend. And the doctors and nurses were in tears. They said, we can't keep doing this. But parents don't know what to do. And not just parents. We lost several adults recently. But I think part of it is saying, okay, let's talk about it. Let's address it. Mm -hmm. And then let's find the resources so that we can learn and prevent it. But if we can't prevent it, there's still options when you're fighting it. And then if you've lost somebody or there's help after for grief and family situations for those who are experiencing loss. Mm -hmm. So it's really incredible, just people don't know about it. And that's what my goal is now. I never wanted to be an advocate. Nobody wants to be an advocate for this, but somebody has to. Yeah. Well, and I feel like more recently in the last couple of years, we're finally talking about mental health. And it's not, you know, the stigma of you're crazy and you're weird. You know, mental health, it's very important that we take care of our mental health. Um, Do you feel like here in Utah, Brandy, that it's the suicide rate is higher in teens and adults, do you, th- do you feel like it's worse here in Utah? Um, <clears throat> I don't know all the exact statistics, but I know Utah does rank in the top for a lot of it. And there's reasons behind it with, you know, some people think elevation or expectation or values or just different things that can lead to it. Mm-hmm. But, you know, again, it's just one of those things where there are resources and there is hope And I just want to make sure, I went to my friend's 16-year-old son's funeral shortly after my daughter's attempt, and I saw my baby laying in that, and I felt my pain. And I've just seen it, I, last week, we lost a 14-year-old. The week before, there was a 16-year-old girl who took her life, and I think she was going to the same school my daughter was going to. And when I dropped my daughter off, I had this appreciation that I got to drop her off. But I also had this heartache that while I'm dropping her off for her first day of school, that another family's planning a funeral. And it just, again, it's like it takes a community. Like we have to do something. Mm -hmm. And and that's the hard part is everyone thinks somebody else is going to do it and they don't think it's going to impact them until it does and then it's too late. Right. Well, and that's why you're here and you're spreading the word of uh, hope, which I I love to hear. Everyone loves to hear that, right? Would you be able to share with us any warning signs or maybe any advice you would have for somebody if you're thinking, oh, I'm a little bit worried about my brother, I'm a little bit worried about my dad, is there any signs that we can look for that you know of? Yeah. Here's the hard part, though. Um, Like, I knew the signs to look for, and it still happened to me with my 12-year-old, because a lot of the signs are the same things that teen, you know, preteens go through. Sure. Withdrawal, um, attitude, sleeping too much, sleeping too little, being agitated, writing off friends, packing, just a a change in behavior is something that you can look for. And there's, you know, when you have people watching, I had somebody message me the other day and they said, I'm worried about my boyfriend. He sounded ominous. I don't know how he's feeling. I said, when in doubt, contact 988. And this is another thing people don't know. 988 is a new 911 for mental health crisis and suicide. This is pretty recent, right? This year? Yeah, they just launched this in July. And a lot of people don't know about it. And so we want to share that message that there is help. If you or somebody you love might be struggling, it's okay to reach out and say, what can I do? Or how can I help them? Or I'm going through this. We don't want anyone to feel like they can't talk about it. Because sometimes we feel like we can't talk to the people we love because they're going to judge us. Mm -hmm. But now you have 988 that you can call or text. Which is awesome. Oh, it's so cool. And, you know, Utah led the way in getting that out there and making it happen. I'm very proud of the state for doing that. We do lead the way in innovation and economy and technology, but we also lead the way in a few other things that aren't so great, like suicide, like plastic surgery and and some of these things here. Well, I love that we're doing something. So Safe UT, perfect. This is an amazing resource for first responders, for kids, for anyone dealing with it in Utah. Safe UT. Safe UT. It's an app. But now you can call or text 988 as well. And I always tell people to err on the side of caution. I mean, would you rather do something and overreact Mm -hmm. than not do something and lose somebody you love? 
or right. your own life. That kind of, that, I mean, that, that really wakes you up right there. That's, it's so true. Do you think that in this day and age of social media, do you think social media plays a role in any of this? Yeah, I do actually. And, and that's one of the things I, I kind of love about Gab who's partnering with us on this event is when my daughter went through her hard time and we took over her social media, we found things that we didn't want to find. You know, it's a, it can be a great tool, but it can be a dark resource. In fact, there was a group overseas and this 16 year old girl was having a hard time. So she posts on her social media. I'm feeling kind of depressed today. Should I kill myself? Yes or no vote. Oh my God. Her so-called friends, 69% of them voted that she should kill herself. And she did. She followed through with it. And those kids, they're, like there has to be consequences. Um, they were looking into that. It's easy to sit back and poke at people and, and say things that you don't mean. It's easy to compare yourself. Oh, Carrie's beautiful. She's on the news. She's got a dream job. Like We don't know what's going on behind the scenes. We only see what we see and know what we know. And everybody's going through something. So I'm always saying, err on the side of kindness. Choose kindness. Everybody's going through something, and we don't know what it is. Yeah. But social media definitely plays a part in it. And I think as parents, we need to limit and make sure that that we're using it for good. And there's safe tech. There's a safe tech conference coming up. There's technology you can look at. But it's huge because when we were kids, we could go home. We could not be bullied from 5 to 6 a.m. or 7 a.m. Right. These kids can never get away away from it. Mm -hmm. They're dealing with it 24-7 all the time and, and nobody can put up with that it's bad on our mental health and and we've got experience so imagine what it does to our kids oh my goodness I mean you're 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 absolutely right it's uh it's something I struggle with myself if I because it's like a highlight reel you're seeing from everyone right it's like this person's going on a trip and this person is doing that and it makes you feel like why wait a minute why am I you know I find myself struggling um and I, I think it's important to remember that every single person that you see is fighting a battle we don't know about yep and kindness is is the way to go. You never know Choose what someone's kindness. going through. I volunteered at the hospital at IHC here for seven years. I did Nobody Dies Alone in spiritual care. I would sit with people when they took their last breath. Or I would be with the family when they turned off life support. I had a mom who, or a lady, her husband, we just turned off his life support. She was devastated. She was crying and hugging me in the hall. And she said, I have to go to the store after this. I've never been to the store by myself. And I imagined her leaving the parking lot driving her car, maybe pulling out in front of you, leaving her cart in the middle of the aisle and blocking you. And just we're so quick to go, gosh, dummy, you know, you're driving bad, you're blocking traffic, you're doing mm-hmm. this. And I, it reset my thinking to go, I'm going to just choose kindness because what if this person just lost the love of their life? What if they're doing something new? What if they just had a suicide attempt? We don't know. So again, if you're listening Think about what you're going through and ask if somebody had cut you a little bit of slack. And when that car in front of you is driving distracted, maybe they just turned off life support Mm -hmm. or maybe they were just diagnosed with cancer. That's eye-opening, Brandy, and I think so important to remember. Absolutely. Um, If someone's listening right now that is struggling, um, what advice would you have, if any, to give to them? I would say we're launching a campaign called Pledge for Life. So hashtag Pledge for Life. Pick somebody that you love. Pick somebody that you trust. Think of your favorite animal or your favorite event. Find something that brings you joy and happiness and reach out to them if you're feeling sad. And also know about 988 because you can call or text anytime. You're not alone. You are valuable. The world is not better off without you. This is so true. You are not alone. You are absolutely not alone. Make a pledge. Pledge for life that if you start feeling upset, sad, depressed, anxiety, that you have somebody that you'll reach out to. And if you don't have somebody that you'll text the 988 or call. From there, also make a safety plan. Just put it on your phone. When, when you know you're struggling, say, okay, I love art. I love music. I'm going to turn it on. I'm going to go for a walk. Because if you can just get through that 10-minute time period, yeah. you can probably get through it. Yeah, and it, it's difficult to get out those dark places sometimes. You know, it's a challenge, and, and you can do it, and you have resources and people that love you and care about you. And do you yeah. feel like 988 is, I mean, do you text? How, how, does that, how does that work? You can call or text. I mean, it is new. There's services all over the world, um, centers that are working on this. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I've been studying up on it. And um, if you feel more confident texting, fine. 
You can be unanimous. You can call. There's licensed professionals who care and want you to call. Don't feel like a burden. That's what they're there for. They want to help. They want to make a difference. So don't be afraid to do it. And it can be things that you're struggling with the economy. You're struggling with addiction. You're struggling with your identity. Life is hard, man. It can be so tough. Yeah, it doesn't have to be. I'm on the verge of taking my life. It can Mm -hmm. be. I'm really depressed and I don't know what to do. And they can probably guide you for resources as well. Well, and speaking of making a difference, you are doing just that with this event. Let's talk about that a little bit more. When it is, how can people help? Yeah, so September 10th, mark your calendar from 7 to 9 p.m. That's Mountain Time. We are going to be live streaming um, Hope Help Healing at LiveLiveEvent.org. We've got incredible performers. We have athletes. We have singers. We have some of the So You Think You Can Dance winners. We've got Alex Boyer. We have Quincy Carter, famous quarterback. We have Glenn Templeton. Just a whole lineup of great people who care about this and care about you and are actually being a little bit vulnerable. We're going to hear from them. Glenn Templeton lost his father to suicide, who was a vet. We want to let people know that they're not alone. Mm -hmm. And we want everyone to stream it. Please stream it. If you want to host a watch party, we would love that. I mean, gather with your friends, gather with your family. Let's really connect. And this is the time to be able to stop that stigma and start the healthy conversations to where we can talk about it. And it's okay. Yeah, it's acceptable. You know, it's like the uh, UFC fighter Patty said, his friend took his life five days before his event or a few days before his event. He said, I'd rather have you cry on my shoulder than go to your funeral. And that's kind of what we want to do here. So we hope people will stream it, live live event. We're trying to have the biggest one. We had over 80 million subscribers through our combined influencer platforms. We're trying a new model. And the, the biggest thing for this is to reach people. We want to save lives. There's no ego. It's only impact. So if you're an influencer listening or a company and you say, hey, we have a platform. We have this many people on Facebook or YouTube. Let us know. We'll stream on your channel too and put you in. We want people to use their platforms and their influence to save lives. How can they reach out to you if they want to help? Yeah, go to liveliveevent.org. My phone number's on there. My email is on there. There's information. I'm happy to talk to any of you. And even before or after Let's get involved. Let's create this community of collaboration because it's not up to just me to do this. I love Da Vinci's quote. I want to end with this. Da Vinci said, I've been impressed with the urgency of doing. Knowing is not enough. We must apply. Being willing is not enough. We must do. So I'm calling out to all the doers. I'm saying, where are you? We all know there's a problem. We all say we're willing to do something, but what are you doing? I'm telling you, it can be as easy as streaming our event, sharing our event, asking your friends or your loved ones, are you suicidal? Finding the resources. It's easy. You can do it. We need you to do it. Somebody who loves life depends on it. Absolutely. And a life is a big deal. Very big deal. Um, If we want to follow you, Brandy, where can we follow you too? I'm on Facebook under Brandy Vega. I'm on Instagram under a shot of Brandy. And then we do Good Deed Revolution. Um, You can look for our social handles there at About Good Deed Revolution. And we also have About Live Live Event. It's a newer thing. We're building it out. But feel free to go to liveliveevent.org, enter your email, and then we'll send you the updates on the event too. Amazing. Then remember that's this Saturday, September 10th. Tell us the times again. 7 to 9 p.m. 7 to 9 p.m. Go to the website for the live stream. Yeah, that's please, where you can see Please it. join us. Please share. We're going to have the hashtag pledge for life. We're having a hashtag 10 for the win. We want you, even if you're just streaming and joining us, to do the social media challenges because your circle of influence is big. So we have one that's like, take 10 minutes, share your story, tag 10 friends. We want this to spiral. Mm -hmm. We want it to hit all ends of the earth and reach everybody everywhere. That one little thing you do by sharing could literally save a life. And and I'm not just saying that. I know my story saved too. So your story can save someone too. And I think we can all do that Yep, at least, right? Thank you so much for sharing your story, Brandy, and talking with us. And thank you for everything you're doing in the community and just for human beings in general. You, uh, You are a phenomenal person. Thank you so much. We really appreciate you talking with us today. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Brandy. And thank you for listening to another episode of Fresh Off the Set. Please rate, review, and subscribe, and we will see you next week.
Congrats, you made it to the end. If you want to continue to freshen up your day, you can watch us on Fresh Living every weekday on CBS Channel 2 in Utah at 1 o'clock. You can also watch us on our YouTube channel, KUTV Fresh Living, and follow us on social media. We will see you next week.